Let's go ahead and practice our arithmetic skills. And the best part about this problem is we're not going to use a calculator. And anytime you're doing math with or without a calculator, you want to be careful and do things one step at a time. But if you're looking at this problem, you're saying to yourself, boy, I kind of remember how to do this because it's been a long time. Well, that's perfectly normal. The farther, you know, we get away from math, you know, uh, especially arithmetic, you know, you're going to forget stuff. But here's going to be a nice little uh, problem, or we're going to look at a nice little problem here that's going to involve some decimals and some fractions. It's going to be a quick rehash. It's not going to, you know, um, cover everything in terms of decimals and fractions. But I think this might be a nice little starter review for those of you who want to kind of get back into math. Now, if you think you can do this problem, put your answer into the comment section, and then we're going to go through this thing step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here we go. The answer is negative 8 over 15. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got that right, that's pretty impressive. Certainly impressive enough. Very nice little happy face. An A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars so you can celebrate your success in arithmetic. Okay? Now, if you didn't get this right, listen, don't beat yourself up. You've probably been away from math for a while. And so the whole point of this video is just to kind of quickly review some of this arithmetic skills. But here's the kind of main uh, point that I want to make to those of you that are continue, or that will continue to learn mathematics. Arithmetic is absolutely critical to your success in algebra and beyond. Okay, so don't learn arithmetic. And then once you're done learning it, be like, oh, I don't need to remember this stuff because now I get to use my calculator and it, every, you know, life's going to be so great. Listen, you still need to know this stuff. All right. So let's go ahead and continue on our journey here uh, by getting going with this problem. All right. So here we have point two and then we have parentheses, uh, five minus eight plus one third. So we have to keep the order of operations in mind. Okay. We have to do uh, all this stuff inside parentheses. So once we get this down to one value, then we'll multiply by 0.2. So you have to recall the order of operations, which is this nice little um, uh, mnemonic little memory aid, but it goes like this. Uh, P stands for parentheses. We got to do everything inside parentheses. Now, when you're doing your work inside parentheses, or if there isn't any parentheses, the next thing you need to look at is E. E stands for exponents or powers. You're going to do things like uh, 2 cubed next, and then you're going to do multiplication and division and addition and subtraction, whatever you see first from left to right. But the order of operations is one of these things that I think a lot of students think they know better than they actually do. They, um, I think on like basic problems, you could do okay, but a lot of students can get in trouble with the order of operations, um, you know, basic skills. So if you're struggling in math, probably you need to like work on your understanding of the order of, order of operations, fractions, positive and negative numbers. These are kind of classic areas where students kind of struggle uh, with in mathematics. But listen, if you're struggling with this stuff, just improve and guess what? Everything will start getting better. Okay, so first things first, we have to work on uh, the value inside these parentheses. So I have subtraction and addition. So we're going to uh, do what we see first from left to right. So we're going to we'll go ahead and tackle this, 5 minus 8. So 5 minus 8 is the same thing as, you know, let's write this over here, 5 minus 8 is the same thing as 5 plus a negative 8, which is negative 3. Okay, so if you're shocked that we're working with positive and negative numbers here, well, you know, this is part of the learning curve. So and this may not be like a, a typical elementary school prom because uh, positive and negative numbers are kind of introduced at the middle school. But anyways, hopefully you knew that, but that is the answer. So we're going to start off by doing this part of the problem. 5 minus uh, 8 is negative 3. And we're just going to continue to work this step by step. Okay, so you're going to write one step, and then you're going to uh, write an additional step. Never try to do too many steps at once in math. You all, you'll just confuse yourself and your teacher, and you'll likely get the problem wrong. Okay, so now that we know that 5 minus 8 is negative 3, we have to figure out this part of the problem. So negative 3 plus 1 third, because we're still working inside these parentheses. So we're going to obviously have to add some fractions. 
But some of you might be saying, well, this is negative three. Uh, you know, this is not a fraction. Anytime you want to think of a number as a fraction, just put it over one. Okay, so you can think of as negative, negative three as negative three over one plus one third. Now, some of you can kind of just see this and be like, oh, negative three plus one third. You kind of do this in your brain. But yeah, you really don't want to do that. Okay, you don't want to break out your work this way. And so here, anytime we're trying to add or subtract fractions, we need to have the same denominator. We do not have the same denominator. So you need to be thinking about the LCD, the lowest common denominator, which of course is three. Now, um, this is another area that a lot of students uh, struggle with. They think they know the LCD better than they actually do. For example, if I gave you the problem one third plus two fifths, almost all of you could say, oh, I know the LCD, it's 15. You would be correct, but if I made these uh, numbers more interesting, like 508 and 36, then, you know, a lot of you would not be happy about that. You'd be like, I'm not watching a video anymore. I'm not doing that prom. You know, listen, you got to know this stuff, especially if you intend to uh, take more advanced math like algebra. But in this case, the lowest common denominator is three. So we have to rewrite this denominator as a three. So we're gonna have to fix this up. It's a one right now. So how do we turn a one into a three? easy. All we have to do is multiply that one by a three. So three times one, of course, would be three. But if I multiply the denominator by three, I have to multiply the numerator by three, that top number. So let's go and take a look at the results of that. Three times one, of course, is three. Three times negative three is negative nine. So this is uh, going to be equal to negative nine over three plus one third. Now I have two fractions with the same denominator, so I can add these, no problem. Okay, so negative nine over three plus one third. How do I add fractions with the same denominator? I simply just add the respective numerators. So negative nine plus one is going to be negative eight. So this is equal to negative eight thirds. Okay, so you know, this is why you have to do, you know, things one step at a time because there's a lot of, you know, steps that we have to take. So let's just kind of review where we're at. So we did five minus eight, that was negative three. Then we just did this part of the problem, negative three plus one third, and we're down to negative eight thirds. So finally, we, now we have to figure out what 0.2 times negative eight third is going to be. Negative eight thirds is gonna be. But we're, here we're working with the decimal, and here is a fraction. So let's go ahead and convert this decimal into a fraction. So 0.2, another way of saying 0.2 is 2 tenths, okay? And this goes to your understanding of place value, right? So if I have like 3.289, this uh, uh, space right here, or this place right here in the decimal, we're talking about uh, values to the right of the decimal point. This is the what uh, place? This is the tenths place. This is the hundredths, this is the thousandths, etc. So if you're down to just this uh, uh, 3.2, or let's just say 0.2, you would say this has two tenths, okay? So the way you want to convert a decimal to a fraction is to say it in terms of its place value. So two tenths or two over 10. So now we just have to figure out what two over 10 times negative eight over three is, and how do we multiply fractions? It's super easy, all you do is simple, uh, uh, simply multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So here you can go two times negative eight, which of course is negative 16, three or 10 times three is 30, but you always, always try to reduce your final answer. So negative uh, 16 over 30, we can reduce down to negative eight over 15, which of course is the answer, right? Two can go into 16, eight, two goes into 30, 15, of course we have these negative signs, but here is the answer. Now one other way you could do this problem is before you multiply, some of you might have seen, oh, two tenths, I can uh, reduce this fraction before I multiply, and that's a good strategy as well. So simply just reduce two tenths down to one fifth. So now we have one fifth times negative eight over three, and when I multiply the numerators and denominators, you end up with negative eight over 15, same answer, okay? So again, not uh, you know, there's different paths to get to the right answer. In this particular problem, there's not too many different ways, but when you're multiplying fractions, adding fractions, there are some kind of little variations to things. That's why the more you know, the better you know uh, your math toolbox will be. But even a basic arithmetic problem like this 
does require you know a decent amount of skills and attention to detail. That's why you always have to be careful. Now, if you're getting back into math or if you need some help with the kind of elementary or basic mathematics like decimals, fractions, etc., let me give you a couple suggestions if you're trying to improve and if you like my instruction. I have a great little mini course. It's called my Math Foundations course. It's just simply a three-chapter course. It covers everything um, in basic mathematics, stuff that we all forgot in elementary school, but it's important. Arithmetic, place value, fractions, percent. That's a great kind of starter course. Um, so I would highly recommend that course if you uh, need help with decimals and fractions, etc. But if you're a little bit more advanced than that, you might want to check out my pre-algebra course as well. And I also have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel. But if this particular video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.